On the last slide, I mentioned that we can measure volume in two different ways. I said we can calculate it by multiplying the length, width, and height of an object uh, together to find its volume in cubic centimeters or cubic meters or whatever. I also said we could use a graduated cylinder. That's this device down here. We usually use a graduated cylinder to measure liquids, but when we have irregular shaped solids, things that are not cubes or rectangles, we can also use a graduated cylinder to help us measure the volume of a solid. So what we use is the water displacement method. This thing right here is showing us what water looks like in a graduated cylinder, and you'll notice it dips down. Okay, this is called a meniscus. Uh, and we measure to the bottom of the meniscus. Now, if you look here, this is 4, we're going to go with milliliters. This is 5 up here, we're going to go with milliliters. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lines between them, which means this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So this is 4.2, 4.4, 4.6, 4.8. So that tells me there are 4.8 milliliters of liquid in this graduated cylinder. But then if I take my dinosaur and drop it in here, the water level rises, and it rises up to this point. And I can do that same thing. There's 2, 4, 6. So this is 5.6 milliliters. So if I want to know the volume of the dinosaur, well, I can tell you the water ended at 5.6 milliliters, and it started at 4.8 milliliters, and the difference between those things is 0.8 milliliters. That extra 0.8 milliliters of, of displacement of water came from what was displaced by that dinosaur. So we call this the water displacement method because this thing displaced that much water, so that's how much volume it has. So we can say that the volume of that dinosaur is 0.8 milliliters, which is exactly the same thing as 0.8 cubic centimeters. One milliliter is one cubic centimeter.